for about three years, I've been telling Joe, I want to go to the Goodwill outlets. And guess what? That day has finally come. So if you're interested in learning about my first time experience at the Goodwill outlets and also see what I got in my haul, then keep on watching. Was that a crazy store, Lincoln? Yeah. What's up universe? I'm Julie here and welcome back to our channel. And in case you're new, I'm a chef, mom, and avid thrifter. Today, I'm taking you along to the Goodwill outlets. But first, let me give you a backstory. This was unplanned, which I think is what makes it even cooler. We happen to have been coming back from Florida to Chicago on a road trip. And we had to stop by Nashville overnight. In the morning, we're like, okay, well, maybe we have time to stop for lunch, maybe like Hattie B's famous hot fried chicken, and then we'll just go. But then because Joe is such a good hubby and he knows me, he was like, do you want to stop by a Goodwill? I was like, what? Okay. So then we looked it up and he's like, there's one along the way. But when I looked on Google Maps, guys, I saw it said Goodwill outlets. We're also going to try out a Goodwill, but this is kind of fun because it might be a Goodwill outlet, which means it has the bins where you sort through a bunch of junk and trash and you just try to find the jewels, the gems, and then you pay for it by the pound. You guys, you know that you're a crazy thrift lady and you've gone to the next level when you get this excited to dig through bins of garbage and you have to dig dig like a bunny just keep going and you got to look for the treasures but that sounded so cool i've seen other people on youtube do it i've heard about it and it seems so interesting and that's because literally i am next level thrifter now it's like the old thrifting stuff is like it's cool but i wanted to go like level up so i'm going to talk about my experience there first and then if you want to skip to my haul i'll leave a timestamp right here so if it is the goodwill bins then that'll be super cool because it'll be the first time i've ever gone So this outlet store, as soon as we pulled in and I saw the glorious blue bins, like I could not contain my smile. I looked over at Joe and he was just like, he knew I was happy. And we had to go with Lincoln, obviously. So that wasn't like my ideal situation. I wouldn't want to bring him in there with all the craziness. And it's still pandemic, it's still COVID. So I was a little bit like wary. Everyone was wearing masks and some people wearing gloves. But then some other YouTubers also say that wearing gloves hinders you from really knowing what you're touching and like feeling the textures of clothing or feeling if something's good quality or not. When we first got in, like we weren't sure what to do because this is our first time there, but not for everyone else. Everyone else there has been going there like a lot. You can tell they're all professionals. All of their shopping carts were filled to the brim, overflowing like a mountain, packed with stuff. And some people even put blankets over their stuff. And that's something that I learned from other YouTubers too, that it's kind of like this code of ethics, like it's etiquette, like you do not touch someone else's cart. As soon as we walk in, you could tell that Joe was completely dumbfounded. Like he was really, like his jaw was open. He didn't know what he was looking at. For me, I just started jumping right into it. But him and Lincoln were just like frozen solid. Lincoln's used to going thrifting with me. Like he does go to regular thrift stores with me and I let him play with the toys for a little bit and then we go look for my stuff. And so he's kind of used to that. And I'm like, I don't know, bud. Like it's just gonna be a bunch of bins and we're like digging around and like crazy people and trying to find stuff. And he goes, what? That's silly. The clothing was overwhelming for me. So I decided to just go straight to like kind of where I saw housewares and toys and like random stuff all hodgepodge together. And I pulled out a fire truck for him. So he played with that for a little bit. And then Joe realized that it was a little too like tiring and crazy there. So he brought out the stroller for Lincoln. Joe stuck around Lincoln most time while he sent me off running <laughs> and I was like going around. But here's the thing. I wasn't brave enough to fight with the other people who were there. Like I'm telling you, these are pros. All of these people most likely were resellers. After a while, they know what's worth something, what's valuable or they're looking for specific types of things depending on what they like to sell. It's not even Hunger Games. It was like Walking Dead because basically you stand behind a line and you wait until the bins get pulled up. Then they like tell you go and then everyone just starts going like just going at it and just like, I mean, you can't even like, you're gonna lose a limb. So I didn't even bother going in that crowd. I just stood there and I waited. Then if you look, there's other bins that are untouched. No one's around them because those bins are the ones that were already ransacked and rummaged through. 
So these are the leftover bins. So Joe, Lincoln, and I just went over those. So I'm telling you, I didn't even get a chance to go through the new bins because I just didn't want to compete. And it was cool though, because as I was going through one of the bins, I ended up talking to a reseller and it was like a sweet lady and she was just saying how she does this all the time, comes all the time, and she supports her entire family like this by reselling. And it's to the point where she knows, she was like, as she's talking to him, she's like picking up treasures, just like pulling them all out, knowing she's like, this sells really well, this sells really well, these hair bows do well, all that stuff. But even though I was going through the ransacked bins, I still found treasures because I might not be pro like them, but I'm like pseudo pro, okay? Like I have the eye of the tiger when I go to the thrift store. Even this dress I'm wearing right now is thrifted, not from Goodwill outlets, but from another Goodwill. While talking to the reseller, I did pull out two purses and it was kind of cool because one was like more like 90s looking and then one was more like 80s looking. But it is really hard to see things because it's just like all jumbled up and piled together and tangled together, like clothes with electronics, with shoes, it's just everywhere. And we wish we could have taken more footage inside, but one, I know that a lot of YouTubers try and then they get kicked out or they say no filming. So we were like, okay, I don't want to risk it. And number two, it was really seriously overstimulating and overwhelming. So we couldn't even pull out our phone if we wanted to because it was just nuts. Like I, I feel like people wouldn't have appreciated if I was like filming them going crazy, going ham on the carts. And number two, I just wanted to get in on the action too and not miss out. So I couldn't film as much. So what Joe and I discovered is that we think that we're not 100% we're not sure, but we think that the bins come out only like once a day, right? Because there's rows and rows on the floor and then they line up behind the lines, they bring out the carts, they dig through it, it's done. They line up to the next row and then more carts come out, dig through it and so on. And so all the carts that are left behind, they are left behind. Um, and so I'm more like the vulture who kind of like picks up the carcasses. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, going through those old bins. And so were some other people. Um, and I'm amazed that I still found stuff. And it just goes to show because not everyone's looking for the same things. I was even able to find like a cool Hot Wheels monster truck ramp for Lincoln. And he, that's like one of his favorite toys right now. He just can't stop playing with it. And anywhere else that truck would be pretty expensive. And I was like, whoa, no one went for this because at a normal thrift store, people definitely would have gone for it. But because here at the outlet, these are people looking for specific things. A lot of, we noticed that a lot of the good kids clothes and toys were not touched. Um, some even like good shoes and things. And I know some of you guys are probably grossed out by the thought of it and some of it is not good condition. I fortunately didn't touch anything slimy, wet, sticky or gross. And Joe warmed up to it too. He is not a thrifter by any means. But after meeting me and going a few times, I think he's got the bug. So when he finds treasures, he gets into it. Uh, what'd you think of the experience? Interesting. What, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> no, there's like professional goodwill outletters. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Uh huh. Cause they will all line up in the back once they're done and then waiting for the new carts, carts yeah. arrival. And then once yeah, they go nuts. I mean, I just didn't even want to film them because I felt like embarrassed or like I felt like I'd be yelled at. Hello. Hello. I almost forgot the most important part. So when you're about to leave, you put everything on scales and you pay by weight. And I guess every Goodwill in every region is different, like how much they charge by the pound. But I mean, in your mind, you can't imagine like how much it'll end up being, but it ends up being like way cheaper than you even think. So I'll wait until the end after my haul to tell you what my total was. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And the person was super nice about it because I told her I was new. I was the first time there. So she instructed me that you put all clothing on the scale first and weigh it. And then you do all housewares and other things later. And then you weigh that too. So, okay, now we're gonna move on to the haul. This is the first thing I found. This was the fire truck. And it was just kind of like nonchalantly like buried under some stuff. And at first when I saw it, I was like, it's probably broken, you know, cause you go to thrift stores and like the ladder part's broken, right? Or the wheels broken or like the rear view part is broken, but it's not actually, it was in great condition. And I thought it was just a generic nonsense, whatever fire truck. And Lincoln for some reason still doesn't have a fire truck of all the trucks he enjoys. So this is the very first real fire truck. And the ladder extends. It actually isn't that generic. It's um, from Dickie Toys. I don't have batteries in it right now, um, but it makes siren noises and it squirts water. And so you just fill it in this little reservoir and it actually works. 
So Lincoln has been playing with it already. He played with it during the whole time we were at the thrift store. And then when we got home, he played with it outside, squirting his monster trucks and spraying trees and bushes. That's a letter though. You squirt yourself? <laughs> and I have this as a great toy. Going along with his toys, this is his huge monster truck ramp that he is obsessed with, okay? And the cool thing is, when I first dug it out, I didn't see this last piece. There's this like three pieces attached to it. I showed Lincoln the Hot Wheels ramp and he liked it immediately. He seemed super excited, but I'm like, no, you can't touch it. I gotta I got clean it at home. And um, I didn't know until later that he actually knew what it was because he watches it on a lot of his YouTube videos. So he was really excited to find this toy that he sees on his videos. I didn't know what it was, but then right when we were about to leave, I found the missing piece and I didn't know it was missing a piece, but I saw this like random piece that looked similar to Hot Wheels and I was like, does this go with this? So I clicked it together and it fit and I'm like, oh, thank God I found it. So overall, it is probably missing like a little flat piece at the bottom, but that's okay, like a launcher. Lincoln has been playing with it nonstop. He loves it. He already has so many monster trucks. He's playing with it with his Hot Wheels, his monster trucks. Wow, buddy, it's so cool. It's a big ramp. Hey, it's a ramp. He showed me later on in his video where that truck was, so he's been using it as like a tow truck to like tow with his monster truck too and it's like super cute so i'm glad that i found that for him and it was super cheap you'll see with the total at the end this was kind of random but i just dug through under like when people are looking for purses and stuff and i found these two thomas trains and he already has some thomas trains now, actually he now has a lot because a friend gifted us some like hand-me-downs, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to leave these behind in case he doesn't have them. So I thought these were the, you know, these are the good quality kinds, like the wooden ones that are solid. So I found these and I'm like, you know, these probably will not cost that much. So I just threw them in the pile and he's been playing with these too, nonstop. So that's good. You know, Thomas trains are always classic. They're actually even really hard to find at thrift stores. And even if you look on Facebook marketplace, they're going to be like charging you a lot. So. Found these, so it just goes to show like you could probably find whatever you want like at the thrift store. I pulled out this Paw Patrol magnetic case and I opened it and saw that it still had like most of its pieces, if not all. It has like a magnets and like play scenes, an activity book, and it wasn't like used or ripped. Um, so I thought this would be great for in the car, car ride, or even using it at restaurants and things like that. So he's into Paw Patrol, obviously a lot of like his kids his age are. So I thought this was neat. And he was already been playing with this too. I was doing um, a Zoom call and he was just across from me playing with this. So we've already used it, already cleaned everything. I love when I find stuff like this and like the pieces are intact and it's not even used. It's like, that's so interesting to me. Like, I mean, you can see the price tag originally is like $15.99. So someone probably just got in there like me. Joe found one thing for himself. And see, that's the thing about Joe. Like, I can't believe that he actually doesn't mind thrifting now. He used to be so squeamish about it. But after I started finding him cool vintage shirts and like, like cool things in general around the thrift store, he started to now enjoy thrifting with me when he goes. He doesn't go on his own. But he found this one, he calls it his whatever shirt. But yeah, it's just a basic cool like t-shirt, um, pretty soft. So. Yeah, I know that he'll just wear this for around the house, under a hoodie, or just in the summertime. And in that vein, he randomly also found me something. I didn't find anything for myself. I found a cardigan and like a spring jacket, but both of them had a little stain on it. So I was like, forget, I don't want to deal with it. So I put them back, but he found this. This is my only thing that I got for me and it's super soft blue sweater. Yeah, and I already tried it on and I think it's good. It'll just be a nice little basic, like a staple. And the reason I was okay with it is because there were no holes, rips, stains, and it's super, super soft. Um, I have a problem with itchy sweaters. So yeah, and it's all like freshly washed. We found a bunch of stuff for Lincoln. Once again, it was mostly Joe who took the time to look for everything. So he found this polo shirt, quite literally polo, and it's his size right now. He can wear it for the warming weather this gap long sleeve. He likes a lot of the gap clothes I noticed. Like Lincoln gravitates towards a lot of gap and anything blue. 
This is the first piece of clothing I found for Lincoln. It was it, right after I found the fire truck, I found this. And it's um, a footed pajama in his size right now, Thomas the Train. Super soft flannel with like grippy footies. And he doesn't necessarily wear stuff like this to sleep anymore. He used to when he was younger. But I thought, you know, he's obsessed with Thomas and it's gonna be really inexpensive and it was in great quality. So, I mean, this is even something that I could probably resell for like a con like when we participate in consignment sales. This basic sweatsuit. So here's the top, it's just a basic gray sweatshirt and jogger style sweatpants. Lincoln is all about jogger styles. Um, so these again, Joe found, and I guess they were somewhat near each other, even though it was like all disheveled and rumpled still skin, like somehow Joe found the pair together. Oh, one more item from Joe. Joe loves Nike and Adidas. So we got him some basketball shorts uh, for Lincoln for when he's a little older. I don't know what size this is. Just as medium, so it's like a medium kid's size, but it's dry fit um, and he'll definitely use this. These are the things I found for him. So I found him this hoodie. Um, it's about his size or maybe one size larger. He could probably still wear it for next fall and it's super thick. It has kind of like that scuba gear kind of material. I don't know how to explain it. It's like squishy, but it's also fleece line. Really thick, which is appropriate for the Chicago frigid winters. And then I found him this for when he's older as well. It's a Transformers t-shirt and this is Optimus Prime. So I like these kinds of shirts where it's like vintage, um, graphic, unique, cool. We got this sleep sack and no, I'm not pregnant, but we love sleep sacks. And the goal is that we hope to have a second baby. So there, I said it, right? I just thought this was like too good to pass up because I'm sure it would be really, really cheap. And it's one of the halo sleep sacks with the muslin material. And so it zips up from the bottom. So it's for easy changing. It's breathable because it's muslin in the summertime with the open sleeves. And we had like halo sleep sacks and other kinds of sleep sacks handed down to us before. But I'm like, eh, like I see one right here. And again, if I end up not using this, like we don't have a second kid or whatnot, like we can definitely try to resell this at a consignment, like a kid's consignment sale. Speaking of which, I have old footage of me at a kid's consignment sale and I have a lot of tips. And that's a video that I recorded a long time ago but never put out. So if you're interested in seeing that footage and some of my tips on how to shop a kid's consignment sale, leave me a comment down below. And when I was rummaging through some bags and purses, I found this leather belt and it has like a stamped leather, it's actually real cowhide. Um, it's worn a little bit in some areas, but in general it has good bones to it. It's in great condition. It wasn't dirty. I love that it's like that supple, bendable leather. It really molds to your body and it's great quality. And I like the detail in it, how it kind of looks that like country, rustic, Western. In a way, this kind of reminded me of Nashville. So I think that's why I got it. And I think it'll go well with a lot of other summer dresses. Like I could see this with like a white summer dress too. So when I was rummaging through the purses, that's when I was talking to the lady who was a reseller and she was going through all the purses too. I mean, that one was seriously Hunger Games. Like everyone, guys, girls, everyone was digging through the purses. I think hoping to find a diamond in the rough, the designer stuff or the, like the unique vintage sell. And I don't know why, but I was gravitating towards this thing. It's like a 90s, like sacky, um, messenger style bag looks kind of childish but at the same time I really liked it for some reason and I think it reminded me of my style in like the back in the day Julie not like 90s because it does remind me of the 90s but like when I was working in New York I had this messenger style bag I used to sling over my shoulder all the time you know like a carry-all that you just walk through the city with and it had this kind of same look it had like this like floral like look to it I like that it was denim and had a little bit of interest with the striped strap. Very sturdy, but um, it was in great condition and there was nothing wrong with it. I love that there's like these front pockets and I've already used it since being back as kind of like this mom bag. We were going for a family walk and I just slung like random stuff in there. I thought it was a great throwback to the 90s. Super simple for the summertime and lightweight. I don't have to worry about it. Um, I can just kind of like throw it around and it could hold tons of stuff. Let me know in the comments, does this remind you of the 90s? Are the 90s back? Do you like this kind of stuff? I mean, I don't know. It just reminds me of like Drew Barrymore, Alicia Silverstone, like that kind of era. I not only found the 90s looking purse, but I found an 80s looking purse. So this also um, is seriously vintage. And when I opened it up, it says genuine snakeskin. So I was like, ooh, but like, you know what? I'm kind of glad that like with this belt and then with this purse, 
the belt is genuine cowhide and then the bag is genuine snakeskin. And the reason I like that I found it is because I gave these items a second chance at life without just being tossed in the landfill. So yeah, I like that I was able to rescue them in a way. I like this kind of like cool pattern. That's what I was drawn to first. And the second thing was the shape that that was unique. And I know this when I found it, it was a little crinkled because somebody who used it before tied it in a knot like this, you know, like over your shoulder kind of thing. I don't think that I'll wear it like that. So I undid the knot. I think I'll wear it as um, kind of like a messenger style, like a crossbody or even kind of like a fanny pack style. Or I could probably even replace the strap with something else generic, like a generic black strap or like a gold chain. Oh, that would be kind of cool, right? This is just like um, a normal like black bag from Target. But I really liked it because it was in great condition. There weren't any scuffs or scratches or any wear and tear. And I don't actually currently own a medium size black purse bag that I can use as just kind of like an everyday carry all. I do have black purses, but they're all on the smaller side. And so this, I can definitely hold more items in there, even if I had to go out with Lincoln and just hold like anything, like random things, like water bottle or extra clothes or like sanitizer. I would say like the shape of it, I'm not like super fond of it because it has like a wider look to it. But I do like that it does have a flat bottom where it can stand by itself and that you can have carry it um, messenger style. As you can see, I'm starting to really enjoy the messenger style. Like for a while, I kind of strayed away from it. I was doing the one shoulder, but I think I'm back for messenger style. It's nice to be hands-free when you're a mom in the summertime when you're hot and you can't be bothered, or if you're thrifting and you gotta be hands-free. Sorry, I had to go and get my receipt. <laughs> With all that said, I pro this probably wasn't the most like Julie-esque or impressive thrift haul you've ever seen, but come on, it was like an hour it was an outlet, you really don't know what you're gonna get, and I wasn't prepared mentally. But still, I thought we still got a lot of cool stuff that we're actually using right now. It's not just like sitting around, we didn't buy it just to buy it. And the total was, we got four pounds of clothing, right here on the receipt, and then we got nine pounds of housewares and other items. So that includes the weight of like this heavy monster truck ramp, purses and the Paw Patrol, and like fire trucks, right? So all this together with the belt, the purses, all that, that was nine pounds. So the grand total was 15.72. Can you believe that? 15.72, including tax. Let's see the receipt for proof. So there was four pounds of clothing, nine pounds of everything else, I guess. I know, I was worried about the, the monster truck uh, ramp because I thought that was the heaviest thing. And I just thought that was so fun because the experience itself was really worth it for me. It was really fun to go treasure hunting and when you find something kind of cool or good and you throw it into your, your cart or whatever, uh, Joe eventually did find a cart. That was really thrilling for me. And the fact that Lincoln's actually playing with his toys right now and I've been using the items already. Um, yeah, I can't wait for another experience like this. Let me know if you would try going out to the Goodwill outlets or if you have already gone to the Goodwill outlets and what was your greatest score? I hear so many stories of like people finding amazing things there and like I can't wait to go again one day. I mean, I don't think I need to go all the way to Nashville. Like I'm sure there's ones that are a little closer. So I really want to go during my birthday. I know that sounds funny. I'm going to be 40 um, in January, right? So that's crazy. I sound so old. But yeah, for my 40th birthday, I kind of want to go to the Goodwill outlets and like really spend a day there. I know that sounds so lame, but like, you know, go make a trip of it, go somewhere fun. And as part of it, go to the Goodwill outlets and like really have time to treasure hunt. I think that would be so unique and I would like to take you along with us. And I want to be more bold next time to dig with all the crazy people and be one of the crazy people. If I have the guts, I want to film more too, if they let us. It really depends on each Goodwill and each location. I hope you enjoyed watching this, and if you did, remember to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what was one of your favorite items that you saw that I thrifted. Also, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you know when a new video like this comes out. Also, be sure to check out our other video, and this is our vlog. This is our trip to Florida. Yeah, it was kind of like a vacation, but we couldn't stop working during the vacation. We were filming everything. Yeah, let me know if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.